Time to talk Miami football. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, uh, breaking down the Canes, and we can't do it uh, any better than when we've got Cam Underwood on the line from State of the U. So it is State of the U. It's the SB Nation platform for the U, and uh, check Cam and the rest of the staff out right there. Cam, how are you doing tonight? I feel good. I feel strong. Uh, you know, just having a, a great week, a short week of, you know, regular work and everything, but, uh, you know, uh, these things that are going on in the off season never sleep. So, uh, yeah, I feel, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. The four day work week. So you're thinking more like, it feels more like, uh, maybe Tuesday than Wednesday in a good way. And, uh, a little, uh, vino on the side. Uh, I saw it slip into the picture. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, I'm an adult, I'm grown. So, uh, you know, I do partake in the vibe, uh, from, uh, different sources every once in a while. So yeah, I'm not going to say what it is exactly, but if you were here last week, you know exactly what this is. So yeah. So the transfer portal giveth and the transfer portal taketh away. And uh, the, the benefit to that that we discussed last week could pay off huge. Um, in regards to the player that you lost today, I, I'm not thinking that uh, it's a boomer bust proposition. It's just a personnel exchange there. So anyway, break down uh, the the latest affection. All right. So yeah, um, the portal works both ways. You know, coming and going. So there are people coming to Miami. I'll get to them in a minute, and then uh, guys leaving from Miami. So earlier uh, this offseason, Lawrence Cager was reported to be transferring away from Miami. That's been uh, supported by for, you know other reports about him taking visits elsewhere uh he's a wide receiver redshirt junior um originally from baltimore maryland was a u.s army all-american um back from high school so he's leaving and now today marquez izard um a four-star recruit from stockbridge georgia um is also leaving uh that was reported this morning and then announced by the university of miami a little bit later this morning getting towards noon time um Ezard is, uh, if you remember the things that I wrote and spoke about last year, he's a big bodied slot receiver, like six one and a half, two hundred and fourteen, fifteen 214, 15 pounds. Basically like your Anquan Bolden build kind of guy. And I do not usually like to compare Canes to players from other schools or, and things like that, but it, the comparison is just right on point. Like just that big physical guy who's not going to create too much um, separation uh, from his defenders, but just bigger and stronger than you and going to make cat tough catches over the middle. Um, but yeah, um, you know, Jeff Thomas was going to leave and then he came back and then you have Mike Harley in front of him, excuse me. And then, um, as our probably like third at the slot. Um, so yeah, just looking for opportunities to, to go elsewhere. Um, and this is a thing that people were speaking about during the season as being potentially possible for as to leave Miami uh, for a variety of reasons. And it seems that those rumors have now come to pass, you know, those things that people were talking about back in October, November, um, and things like that. So, you know, we wish everybody well, respect all decisions, whether it's recruiting or, or players on the roster, uh, whichever decisions people make, because they make the best decisions that they can for themselves. So we definitely, um, you know, wish both Lawrence Cager and Marquez Izard um, the best. You know, there's a couple, another couple guys, Tyler Gauthier is leaving, um, well, he graduated, excuse me, Hayden Mahoney is leaving by transfer. Um, so there have been a few guys, there's been like three or four, uh, who are leaving from Miami uh, through the transfer portal. So I know that we've been talking a lot about the players that Miami's gaining, but there have been some fringe-level players who are leaving as well. Speaking of the guys that Miami is gaining to the roster, uh, the latest one was last night. Uh, he's a defensive tackle from UCLA. His name is Chidozi Noruka. Um, he's another Nigerian um, descendant uh to be at miami you have you know the Najoku brothers you had um uh tito odinigbu you had ufamba kamalu there's a lot of uh nigerian bloodlines coming through miami recently so when you have you know those uh, two nigerian natives who host uh that, that being odinigbo uh and Najoku who host uh naruka when he comes down i mean just it it, you want to be around like-minded people you know what i mean so uh, when you share a common background you know being like a first or second generation Nigerian American. Um, those things are very, you know, strong. So he's coming over. Uh, UCLA changed from like a four three defense to a three four, and he's kind of that athletic tackle, not that big nose. Uh, he's like six two two eighty seven. So he's not a massive, massive Vince Wilfork type dude. Uh, so when they went to the three four, you really need a nose tackle, a gigantic space eater in the middle of that defense. And Naruka's not that. So he saw his playing time dramatically decrease. 
Um, he had like 40 tackles, 46 tackles, eight tackles for loss and two sacks two years ago. Last year, he had like a handful of stats total. Um, so he's looking for his uh, graduate year to come to Miami and have an impact like Tito Odenegbo did last year at Miami with his one year of eligibility. So, uh, yeah, Naruka is coming in. You also have uh, Tate Martell, obviously, we spoke about. Asa Martin from Auburn, we spoke about. Um, KJ Osborne from Buffalo, we spoke about. Uh, I'm forgetting some, but Bubba Bolden uh, from USC, um, who was a high school teammate of Brevin Jordan and Tate Martell. Those are, and Tommy Kennedy from Butler. Uh, those are the other five guys add in with Naruka. That's six guys coming in. So, yeah, the portal has been working a lot on both sides. And I know that people are looking at Miami for taking all these, you know, guys to fill in gaps of the roster because obviously this recruiting class is not going to do that. But by getting guys who are game ready, hopefully, they'll be able to, you know, again, fill in some of those holes of the roster and, and help the team's performance go forward. So, yeah, Marquez Ezard was the latest guy to leave and. Chigozi Naruka is the latest guy to come to Miami through the portal, and Miami is going to continue to work the portal even more going forward. You folks out there, you are obviously just sitting on the switch on Wednesday night. So I thank you. I believe Cam thanks you. So the situation here is anything wrong with this live stream tonight, blame on me. Number one, work ran way over. I wanted to be on with Cam. I told him 645. It turned out to be 718 or whatever the time was. So that's on me. So we're not going to have Cam as long as uh, we typically would. Maybe what we need to do, and it, this will be completely up to Cam, lock in a time every week, and that's his time for an hour. Bam. The other thing would be that uh, I didn't get a notification out for this. So you folks, Cam, this shot from 2 to 93 like that. I love it. Uh, people online. So they didn't even have a notification that I typically get out in the morning to say, hey, 8 o'clock tonight, 7 o'clock tonight, whatever the time is, boom, Miami football talk. And they have time to prepare. Notification went on like uh, 30 seconds before we went on. And, um, and you know, people are around. Is. So, you know, I appreciate it. So, you know, lots of, lots to talk about. I'll try to uh, talk quickly and, and shorten my answers to get through as much as possible. Absolutely. So <laughs> we appreciate that. So if you have a comment or question for Cam, I will be uh, monitoring the live chat. Otherwise, we're going to dig into recruiting here. Of course, we are two weeks away from what has been the traditional national signing day, the first uh, Wednesday of February mm -hmm. that uh, is now been backed up to December in regards to most of the signees coming in to the major programs, about 75 to 85% uh, of the signees during December. But we're still looking at some top prospects and some really key finds, especially the situation that I don't want to pin it on one guy, but I will Mark Rick put you in, in a sense with all the, the defections uh, before the signing, the, the defections of commitments uh, moving away and, and what Manny Diaz is trying to catch up to, uh, it being the Miami standard. So, Cam, uh, who are those guys out there that you're really eyeing at this point? Yeah, there's guys at every position. And, I mean, it's through the course of the recruiting class. I usually do like a monthly class breakdown. But there's just been so much going on with, you know, obviously a coaching change and all these transfers and things like that. So I'm not going to get to one for January, I don't think, uh, class breakdown that is. So let this fill in for that. There are players at pretty much every position that Miami's chasing after. I'm going to try to talk fast. There's a quarterback, Peyton Matoka from Houston, um, St. Thomas Aquinas, the one in Houston, not the one in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, but he's like 6'4", 204, uh, had like four, 4,500, 4,800 yards of total offense this year, something like that. Um, Dan Enos had seen Matoka from his sophomore year, I want to say, back when Enos was at Arkansas, uh, and, and Matoka went to go camp there. Long story short, Enos comes to Miami. Obviously, Miami's still looking for more quarterbacks, even get, with getting Tate Martell on the team. And so they offered Matoka. He's coming in for a visit this week. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, my, moves could be made quickly there. So uh, we'll see. Obviously, there's Lance Legendry. Uh, Legendre, however you want to say it, from um, New Orleans. Uh, he's a, a four-star dual-threat kid um, from Warren Easton High School, I want to say, I think. Anyway, he's going to visit in a couple of weeks. He's a quarterback as well. Um, and on the first play of his highlight reel, he throws the ball, no kidding, 73 yards in the air. Like, during a game, he's running around. Yeah, I saw Mark's head. He goes, what? No, seriously, first play, 
this kid has a cannon for an arm. Uh, but either one of those guys could be the high school quarterback that Miami takes. Obviously, I've been saying for a long time that the quarterback position in this recruiting class is quite substandard. So even with getting one of those guys, it would be a developmental pick uh, or, or addition to the team. But, you know, you got to have a quarterback every year. So, you know, maybe this is a year where you take a project and the next year you try to get a superstar. Running back, the number one target is Mark Anthony Richards. Uh, that is Armand Richards' little brother from Wellington, Florida. He's going to take a visit this week. Um, he's, you know, he, he could be dynamic as a safety slash linebacker that strike a role on defense. Uh, I think he's a first-round draft pick or a high draft pick, at least. Uh, we'll call it on the defensive side of the ball. That's where I prefer him. But he wants to play offense, and people have been recruiting him to play offense. Um, and Eric Hickson, excuse me, Miami's new running backs coach, was recruiting um, uh, Richards to be a running back when he was at uh, Akron even three years ago. So the relationship there of the running backs coach recruiting this multi-talented player to be a running back exclusively exists. So we'll see what happens. Wide receiver, um, TJ Jones from Lake City, Columbia in Florida. He's like a three-star, four-star kind of kid, borderline, but he's very fast and athletic. Uh, and maybe he's a guy who gets a look. George Pickens is from Hoover, Alabama. He's committed to uh, Auburn, and Miami's pushing to get him in on a visit. Haven't seen or heard anything about an offensive lineman, so hopefully that changes. On the defensive line, Jared Harrison Hunt from Christ the King in New York is a guy that Miami's after. Uh, Jadarian Boykin is a defensive end who Miami brought in last weekend, but they seem to be looking at the other names on the board of, uh, potentially in front of Boykin. Speaking of those names on the board, Chris Bogle from Cardinal Gibbons, again, around the corner from my house. Miami's trying to push to get him to come for another visit, even though he's committed to Alabama. Uh, Tennessee is pushing for um, Bogle as well um, to see if they can get him to flip. But Alabama has hired the defensive line coach from Florida, who was Bogle's primary contact at the, with the Gators when he was there, and the defensive coordinator, uh, I want to say, who was from Tennessee, and he was the lead recruiter for uh, Bogle at Tennessee. So you're bringing in two guys who Bogle already has a, co a connection with uh, to maybe keep him committed to Alabama. Um, in the transfer portal, JJ, sorry, uh, Jalen Phillips, excuse me, was the number one overall recruit two years ago, 2017, 6'5", 230 pound uh, defensive end. Uh, went to UCLA, had two injury plague seasons. He retired, uh, but then is looking like maybe he wants to get back and playing football. And if you want to play football and you're the number one player in America and you're interested in maybe uh, being uh, a Cali Kane and coming over from the West Coast over here to Coral Gables, just like those uh, you know Nevada boys, hey, come on down. So we'll see about that. Trevon Hill uh, was dismissed from Virginia Tech, um, which is having like their whole team transferring. It's crazy. Anyway. He's like a starting level defensive end, and he is interested in Miami, but Miami is going to slow play that one because uh, he, Hill's not going to graduate till May anyway. So a decision does not need to be made now. At linebacker, there's Eugene Asante from uh, Virginia, and there's uh, Octavius Brothers from Rockledge, Florida. Miami wants one of those guys in this class. The reports are that Brothers is the more likely of those two. Um, you have Christian Williams, who's committed to Alabama as a cornerback from Daphne, Alabama, but had a strong visit last weekend. And Miami seems to be trying to make a move. But again, you're recruiting against Alabama. So I make no declarations about the future for Christian Williams. Um, he's going to visit like Texas A&M and LSU these next two weeks. And he's still committed to Alabama before, you know, obviously was signing day. Uh, he did not sign early. Um, Martin Emerson from Pine Forest uh, up in Niceville or something like that up in the Panhandle of Florida. He's committed to Mississippi State, but he's going to come back down for a second official visit, again, which is allowed through the rules. Uh, if a coaching change happens, that you can take another visit to your school or to any school. Um, so he's going to come back down. Miami's pushing for him. Kyer Elam from North Palm Beach, uh, the Benjamin School, but he's Matt Elam's uh, cousin who went to Florida. So obviously that's probably where he's going to end up. And there may be a couple of other names, but I think I hit every position group on the way down. What's next? Whoo, that was packed in. So if you didn't catch <laughs> yeah, that, right. you got to rewind and win it post because Cam went boom, 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 position by position. And uh, he didn't break stride. That was pretty impressive. Yeah. Jalen Phillips, yeah. Sure. I was going to bring up Jalen Phillips as a number of people did in the live chat. So you cover the ground there. This kid is a freshman, only played six games. He had seven and a half tackles for loss and five and a half sacks in six games, a half a season at UCLA. And then, yeah, got hit with some injuries and so forth. And um, 
looks like uh, he is uh, ready to roll somewhere, going to go somewhere from uh, UCLA. Yeah, I have been hit with this whole transfer portal recently where the quarterbacks have been the main focus, and now uh, mm -hmm. players are flying all over the place, and it seems like a ridiculous question. I've got to admit, when I read it, it was. I thought it was, but Liberty City Boy is asking – because I see it as the NFL draft is how you build a team. You supplement mm -hmm. through free agency in the NFL, much like mm -hmm. you would hear looking mm -hmm. at it as a free agency type system. But he's asking if you could build a championship team based on the transfer portal. I mean, it is hypothetically possible because you can get top level talent through the transfer portal. But the thing about any team, about any organization is there has to be that synergy. You know what I mean? That that growth over time, the development over time, being in the system, knowing all the nomenclature. It's, you know, I, people talk about themselves. So I'm going to talk about myself. When I was in, in elementary or well, middle school, we were my basketball team at the Detroit Walter School lost four games in three years. Like we went everywhere. They, we got kicked out of several tournaments because we won them every single year. But what I would position play were you guy. playing? I played all over the floor. I played one. Okay. I mean, yeah, I played uh, point through power forward just because I had this mentality. But I played everywhere. But having played with these guys, having been on that starting unit for so long, we didn't call plays when we got to seventh grade because we've been playing since fifth grade together. So we had that synergy. You know, if we call if if our coach called a press, you already knew who was going. You knew all the rotations. You didn't really even have to talk that much because there had been that growth, that connection, that community that we had. On a team, especially to be a championship caliber team, you have to have that. Look at Alabama. Guys might leave from there, but that team has been there for a long time. If you have a guy like Deshaun Hand, who was a first team all rookie for my Detroit Lions, he was the number one recruit years ago, and he didn't play significant stats until his fourth year at Alabama. Everybody was there. So you can, I think, potentially in the future get championship level talent four-star and five-star elite players through the transfer portal. I don't know if you can recreate that ineffable connection between the team in a short period of time that you would inevitably have to do by having a free agent situation and really putting everything together in one off season or one summer to build a championship caliber connection because you're going to need that as well. So I think maybe it's possible, but probably not practically. So I'm going to extend the point, uh, in this regard, that yes, uh, winning championship levels in sports isn't all about just talent. It's about uh, fitting the right pieces, getting into a system, chemistry, synergy, all those things. And also, if you really truly believe in your program, your culture, it's raising people up into that culture and having them understand what's expected of them, how you uh, conduct yourself as a blank, whatever the team, whatever the uh, tradition. And therefore, you lose that to a certain extent by transferring people in from all over the country. The plus side is that they have a track record. You can say, okay, you played a year in college, you played two years, you played three years. We know what you can do versus for his recruiting as much of it as it is a science in bulk, in mass. It's obviously a bit of a crapshoot individually where these guys have track records. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, all, all of that I agree with, honestly. Like, there's just, there, there's so many different layers, and, you know, there, there's layers to the onion, there's levels to the situation. Cam Underwood, State of the U, please join him and the rest of the staff there breaking down Miami football. We are two weeks away from the uh, final National Signing Day, the traditional National Signing Day, the first Wednesday of February. Uh, Lorenzo Lingard, of course, was the number one or two rated back, depending on your service coming out of high school, if my memory serves me. And uh, he's got a recovery process going on right now that's being asked about, Cam. Yeah, I haven't heard much about Lingard, but I've seen, uh, you know, his posting on social media um, about, uh, you know, just wanting to get back out there and, and everything. So I haven't heard any setbacks or anything. So we'll see. Um, he's probably going to be limited through, uh, you know, the Matt Drills offseason program, uh, things like that. He'll probably be maybe held out for spring just because, you know, when you tear a knee ligament, it's going to take months. So I don't think that Miami is going to push him back quickly, even though he might want to regenerate like Wolverine. Uh, but the cautious course of action would be to make sure that he is 100 percent or as close to 100% as possible before really putting him back out there. So uh, I haven't heard anything bad, but I haven't actually really looked into it either. But I assume uh, that Lingard is doing well. 
We've received our first uh, Florida Miami prediction. And it comes from George. And I think I prefaced you on George <laughs> last week. You so did. you know what's you coming. Did. Gators 45 24. But it, it's coming from George again. Right. I mean, I, I get where you come from. And if I were objectively to pick this game right now, I would probably lean um, with Florida um, objectively. Uh, obviously, not in my heart because I sit here wearing a UM pullover. Um, but I don't foresee 45 points. That's that's where the road diversion of yellow would. I just don't think that that would happen, but we'll see. Not unless the Florida offense gets immensely better and the Miami defense uh, immensely worse, but based on 2018 and what we would project out of those two units over the coming off season, yes, we're talking about a marginal offense by Florida standards, a marginal offense, though talented, and a Miami defense that I would rank so I'll pull myself uh, as a neutral observer. I would say Miami's defense in 2018, I say it's one of the eight to 10 best defenses in the country. I don't know, somewhere in that range. Right. And I mean, I would probably go even a little bit higher than that. And I know that people are going to back. I mean, honestly, but I mean, objectively too. I mean, the number one pass defense, like number one tackles for loss. Um, I don't know people are going to say, oh, well, Clemson had the same number, you know, raw number, whatever. Clemson also played two additional games to get to the same raw number of you know, types for loss. Um, but yeah, I just don't think that 45 points is realistic, but um, stranger things have happened. Cam, what do we know about Dan Enos's uh, scheme? Do we know a lot about? Uh, yeah. Um, Dan Enos, yeah, yeah, definitely. We have, that was a thing that uh, I talked about being in the, in the works last time. If you want to go on state of the U.com, our X's and O's guy, uh, Justin Tatavio actually took a look at, several versions of Danny Enos' offense, going back to his time at Arkansas, which is when he was um, offensive coordinator uh, and running the offense. So there was a year, I forget the number, uh, 2014, I want to say, 13, something like that, uh, when he had NFL-level talent and they were doing really well. Uh, you can look at that and some of the things uh, that they did uh, there. And then, you know, obviously, as the talent kind of fell off, uh, there in Fayetteville than the performance did as well because you had to have good players to make good plays. But that is a thing that we've already evaluated and looked at um, on State of the Use. So please go check that out. We've also talked about Tate Martell individually, what his skill set is and what he could potentially bring to the offense if he gets his waiver to be able to play this year. And of course, if he were to win the quarterback battle, because like I said, it's going to be him, Jaron Williams, Nikosi Perry, Cade Weldon, um, and then maybe even Peyton Matoka or Lance Legendre uh, who uh, come in. So there's going to be multiple guys. And, you know, Manny Diaz has said that everybody has a clean slate. So, you know, it could be anybody. And I know people are thinking Cade Weldon's not going to go win the job. If he goes and wins the job, then he won the job. Um, and then obviously we got to talk about, you know, the coaching and development to why he didn't see any other field before. But, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think that we're handing the job to Tate Martell, but he definitely raises the floor for the room, uh, the quarterback room for Miami. And, uh, you know, people are going to be pushed and everybody has to really bring their best A game. But uh, between a couple of players that we've looked at and the scheme with Dan Enos, we have done that already on State of the U. So I'm not going to spoil that, which we've already done. So please go to the website and check it out. All right. Uh, Cam Underwood, State of the U. And again, please blame me. Throw your arrows at me for uh, the mishap tonight. It all had to do with work, and I scheduled Cam first because a bunch of other people got uh, to me first, and I slotted them, and I left some time, and then it didn't work out, and then I backed up Cam to the beginning, which worked uh, in theory, but uh, didn't work in regards to timing. So it'll especially hurt many of you and Cam possibly, although Cam, it's not going to hurt Cam. Many of you who are soaking up the information that – I am leaving the live stream here for Florida Gator talk. So, so it's not just oh, that, oh, we're getting the live stream short, but uh, I got a Florida guy at 745. Yeah, no worries. No worries. So, you know, George, uh, I'm sure you'll tune into that. But, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I did try to talk as quickly as I could. And, uh, you know, next time we stretch it out, maybe we'll get some more questions. Absolutely. So we've got uh, plenty of offseason left, plenty of Cam left, and uh, obviously we, we'll take him whenever we can get him. Uh, Cam, hopefully we can do this uh, soon, if not next Wednesday, whenever it works best for you. We will talk that over and uh, try yep. to lock in something that's a little bit more. We've been pretty consistent on these Wednesday nights for you, so uh, right. we hope you appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I do appreciate it. Like I said, I know you got to run, but stateofthu.com, we have a bunch.
bunch, a bunch, a bunch of different stuff. X's and O's, transfer portal stuff, basketball, non-revenue stuff. We're talking about uh, men's and women's tennis, a women's basketball, track and field, swimming and diving. All of your Miami Hurricanes athletic needs. StateofTheU.com. Go and check it out. Everybody have a good one. And when I say you should appreciate it, I'm talking about the folks out there, because when you talk about uh, college football talk and you guys see that I have a lot of very capable contributors and guests come on here uh, when, when it comes to somebody who's really locked in on a program and all the various facets of that program and how it relates to college football in general, uh, doesn't get better than Cam. Cam, we appreciate it. You have a great night. Thank you. I always appreciate the compliments. Go ahead and run over and talk about that terrible, terrible team from Gainesville. <laughs> Bye.